What's up? It's Way Up at Angela Yee. I'm here, and Jasmine from the jasminebrand.com is here. Yes. And we have, for Mastery of Comedy, Josh Johnson How's in the room. Going? Hello, how are you? I'm good. How about you? I like your very calm demeanor. I'm, I'm good I, as well. Thank you. I, I try. I try to be calm. You are kind of calm. You, you yeah. came in kind of calm, too. Yeah. I, I definitely, I can't tell what's calm and what's, like, bumming people out. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, when, sometimes when I'm talking to people and I'm like this and they start to drift, I'm like, all right. That's either that's either good for them. Maybe they needed to calm down for the day, or I am like really boring them. You this have a good really... radio voice. Oh, thanks. But the, the yeah. evening kind of voice, not the morning. You yeah, just do the, the evening. Yeah, yeah. You like the smooth no, sounds. The morning, you would wreck your car. <laughs> this would be it. Would be terrible. But let's talk about some of your history, Josh Johnson. This is my first time actually sitting down with you, so yeah. I'm excited for that. But just as a comedian, let's talk about your background because you're from Louisiana. Yeah, I grew up in Louisiana. Okay. And then I started comedy in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to New York towards the end of 2015. A lot of legendary comics from Chicago. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, so what was that like for you? What about Chicago made you get started in comedy? Uh, I think Chicago made the most sense because it's it's one of the, I feel like it's the only secondary market Mm -hmm. in the U.S. where you can get really big in Chicago but still be completely unknown. So it's like a nice, (laughs) it's like a nice level of, knowing how to handle yourself once things start going well without the it's like a real test run mm-hmm. without if you if you pop in New York people from all over hearing about you seeing you and everything and especially if you're really young or if you're really early in whatever you're doing you might not be able to handle that pressure and okay. stuff so it, it just felt like the most natural progression before I moved to more of the coast or something. That's an interesting take on it. It is. Who it's, did you, it's a mature take. <laughs> who did you meet on the come up there, though? Because there's some, like I said, some legendary comedians. Um, I mean, when I was starting, some of these people had obviously already started because yeah. they've been doing longer than me, but uh, Chris Red was in Chicago while I was in Chicago. Um, I think this was like, Hannibal was like folklore. Hannibal wasn't like <laughs> still trying to do it. Like Hannibal was Hannibal already, but right. he'd come back and visit and it would always be such a big deal. We'd be so excited to go see him. I randomly sat yeah. next to him on a flight one day. How really? Was that? It was interesting. And then I think he fell asleep at one point, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had an interesting conversation. It was just, it was fine. Yeah. yeah. It was just random. I'm like, I'm sitting on the flight next to Hannibal Burris. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's also weird when you see some people from flights. I'll feel bad. Like, you know, I've, I've sat in first class, first class a f- couple times, and every once in a while you'll sit next to somebody who does something yeah. that you should relatively know. And I, I feel like I just keep to my own world so it's much. It's hard to know what to do, too. That I, yeah, and then I'm like, should I say something? Because now, two hours into the flight, I've recognized them. Right. But it's two hours too late. I sat next to Will Packer, and we didn't say anything to each other at first. Mm-hmm. But I didn't realize, because you know you don't want to be like looking like that, so I just kind of like looked. And I said, like, that might be, but I'm not sure. Right. And then it took a while, and then it's like, oh, hey. Yeah. And then you're kind of stuck like, you know, not that I, I mean, I like Will Packer, but then <laughs> now once you open that, yes. now you got to continue to talk. I didn't want him to feel obligated to talk to me. Right. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and now you got to like try to watch the departed next to Will Packer. <laughs> you got to be like fiddling with your remote next to Will. Like, like you got to watch one of his movies. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. 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 I, I can see that. Anything that starts to go wrong is happening in front of him. It's no longer an inconvenience <laughs> for you on your flight. Like if you open the pretzels too hard and right. spill pretzels all over yourself. He's You're right not, there. He's right there. I sat next to T.I. once. He and, told me about that. Yes. And, um, yeah, <laughs> he was drinking a lot before we took off. <laughs> and, and and the last person I'll say, French Montana. I sat next to him on a flight one time, too. How yeah. was that? It's just so, it was good. He was, he's pretty much slept. This is when he was dating Khloe Kardashian, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So before we took off, he called Khloe, like, to let him know, I'm on the flight, I'm about to take off. And then mm-hmm. he fell asleep. He the did he know flight. you? He, did he yeah, know you yeah. were? Okay. Yeah, we spoke. Yeah. So that's all my flight stories. I feel like it's it's also funny that that your question is also my question, which every time is like, how was that? <laughs> yeah. As yeah, if yeah, yeah, flying yeah. next to French Montana is the experience you pay JetBlue for. You and, know? Yeah, it was JetBlue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's no, so I know. It was no first class. Yeah. It was no, mint. it was no, no mint. Oh. And so I had, um, actually, I think I switched because somebody was in the aisle seat. So he was like, yeah, sit here. Because, you know, he probably would rather sit next to, like, somebody small. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then he just fell asleep the whole flight. I've, I've only sat in front. I sat behind Winnie Harlow, the, the model. No? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you okay. speak? I did. Um, And then um, 
Ari Lennox. Oh, was that your singing? Yeah, that was yeah, me singing. Lennox. And I okay. think that's, that's all I can. I love Ari Those Lennox. Are, oh, and then Amanda Seals. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is LA that's to fun. New York, I think. Yeah. Mm, and one time Tay Diggs sat behind me on the flight, but I didn't know him, so I didn't say okay. it. But he's yeah. very yeah. cool. Okay. I, I feel like... <laughs> I don't really have any <laughs> no good flight like stories. no like no good flight stories like that. All my flight stories are horrible. So all of my flight stories are like there was this one lady in, in on a flight one time that was clearly she clearly had some issue with flying because mm. you know she was one of those nervous talkers. And we're still boarding and everything. I sit down. She's in. She's like in front of me. I guess like yeah, I'm the aisle. So she's in in front of me in the middle seat. She talks to the person next to her to the right, talks to the person next to her to the left, oh. quickly exhausts both of them. Like, they're, <laughs> yeah. like they're trying to just, like, like I one word answer, yeah. I'm trying right. to sleep, whatever. She looks back through the crack at me. Uh -oh. oh, no. And she's like, so what movie you got to watch? Oh. I'm, like, touching my pad. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just staring. I'm like, how is this happening? <laughs> this is so crazy. And then I, I feel like those are my, all of my flight stories are, are horrible encounters with very specific people. Okay. It's never like, man, it's like funny. Like, I said famous person fell person. asleep next to me. Yeah. yeah. How soon, when you're going through a weird experience, how mm -hmm. soon are you thinking, I'm going to turn this, this material. into a joke? Yeah. <laughs> Almost never. Some, really? Like I, I, not only do I try to be present in life, but also when something is actively happening, it's so bad that you're, that you are in it. Like, um, I never even talked about it on stage. I talked about it to some friends and stuff and on my podcast before. But there was one time I was walking down the street and this lady in, in front of me was on the phone and she was like le like letting someone have it, mm, right? I love that. But in a in a in a true like you could tell she was somebody's boss. Yeah. Like she like she was talk she was really talking to them like a dog, right? Like it was it <laughs> oh. was rough. She was going through a rough day. And so she's let him have it, let him have it. We've gotta be at least like maybe 15 feet apart or something like we're, we're we've got a distance between us but she's in heels and as she's walking uh oh she steps onto the grate and both <laughs> heels get stuck in the grate and she falls backwards <laughs> oh, hold on, and Angela, she like, it falls, she like it falls. does this because she fights it yeah she's, she's like, like she puts yeah. those calves in and she's like trying to lock it in <laughs> and it's like fighting falls back and i'm still walking up <laughs> With this is because I got to go this way, and so I'm still walking up to her as it's happening. And and at first she like tries to just she's so angry still from what's on the phone, and now an angry like you know what I mean like just a, a truly angrifying thing is happening in real life. You know what I mean? So now she's she tries to will herself up. Like do you remember in the Matrix when he knocked down Mr. Smith and Mr. Smith went like that? <laughs> And stood back okay. up. And so she tried to do that. That didn't work because it also isn't physics. Yeah. And then she movie. tried. Did you ever watch the Power Rangers back in the day? Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. So you know how whenever <laughs> any of them got kicked in the chest and fell, they would do the little crab thing yeah. and pop up. She tried to do one no, of those with, no, with her feet still stuck. So then she just went up like up backwards. You know what I mean? Like a little kid on the playground doing right. like the backwards crab walk. So then she... But still on the phone. Still, like, the phone is here on the grate, okay. right? Imagine if it would have slid through the grate. That would have been it. It did. That's the, that's the thing. So it's on the grate, right? And then I'm walking up, and I get to her, and I'm like, do you need any help, ma'am? And she looks at me, she's like, no. Oh, was this in New York? It was in New York. Of course that it was. was like, it. And I was like, of course it was. are you sure? <laughs> I know that pissed her off even more. And she was like, "Yes," and then and then she goes to like backwards hand grab the phone, and it she pushed it through the grate. Oh, so now she's karma. like, oh! like, like it's like screaming, and so I just start to walk away. I'm like, "Are you sure?" Because like one more time, are yeah, you sure? I asked okay. one more time, "Are you sure?" Because I'm like, I, "You can't get out." You're so nice. I know you're not from. Okay. Yeah, it was it was it was pretty bad. But I said all that. I told that entire story to say. At no point was I like, "Man, it's gonna be a hot bit." Like in in my in my <laughs> life, I was like, "Oh, this lady needs help." Nothing? No, because okay. in my head, I'm like, "This would." <laughs> I can only think of ways that things could go poorly for me if I feel things. Because there's been things in my life where I'm like, man, I should film this or nobody will believe me. Right. But then I've just seen people film something that I could, I can put myself in their shoes and then <laughs> they're filming it earnestly. But then the whole comment section is like, man, it's messed up. Why would you, you feel, feel somebody? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just leave my phone in my pocket. 
Did you laugh at all after you walked away or no? I, I didn't laugh till the next day. Okay. Really? Yeah, because initially I was like, man, she she really in trouble. <laughs> like I like she's she's not gonna be able to get That's out. That's nice because I don't know I don't know if I would have asked would I have asked if she needed help? Or if, would I have minded my business? You might I don't know. It's fifty fifty. It sucks because that yeah. is like their frame of mind. I was in um Vegas and this woman was standing by the elevator and she was like a little tipsy mm-hmm. and she just collapsed. Like her feet slid. I think she had on these heels that were very uncomfortable. <laughs> Look at him laughing. And, <laughs> and she just honestly like sat and boom on the floor. Right. Like really, really loud. And I just kept walking. And <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but what could I do? Help yeah, her up. Uh, you you couldn't. Yeah, you couldn't have caught her. No, you could so help her like, up. I also sometimes feel like it's embarrassing, and people would rather you act like you didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every once, you know who I, you know who I don't help. The first thing you do is look around and like. Yes, any, yeah. yes. When someone looks around, that's who I don't help. Yeah. Because if I see somebody <laughs> fall, okay. So in college, there was a professor <laughs> who who he had fallen like that, but he had. So this was. <laughs> My buddy, my buddy Donovan is the one that told me this story and he was walking and he saw the professor walking, right? And they're about to be at like a diagonal, like a diagonal angle to each other, right? Mm -hmm. And he, the professor slips and falls backwards, but the way he fell was like unfair. Like the like he <laughs> fell unfair. like he fell like he fell out of the sky. <laughs> like the man literally just fell backwards, How? but he fell like he fell out of a building because not only did he fall, but then when his briefcase hit, it unlocked and all oh, the papers went no. everywhere. So the papers went higher than they should have gone right. as well because there was wind. So it just looked like he had fallen <laughs> from a building, and then and then he had, he had really landed on his back pretty hard, and then gets up and sat up, and paper still landing on him as he's sitting up, <laughs> and and the way he looked around, my buddy was like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna not yeah, acknowledge it at all," because yeah. he looked around like hopefully nobody yeah. saw that. That's the that mirror. when I fall. That's the first thing I do is I'm like, "Did anybody see that?" Yeah, and then you kind of laugh at yourself a little. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I kind of feel like that when I I don't fall as much, but I oh no, I did fall in the shower. Remember I fell in the shower because I was drunk. You've fallen a lot, Jasmine. I don't know what it is. <laughs> One time, this is a funny fall that she did. We're getting in an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah. And so you know, it's a it's like a truck, and you know how in the middle row sometimes there's three seats, and sometimes it's empty in the middle. So mm. she thought it was a three seater. So she goes and just plops down in the empty spot, <laughs> thinking it's a seat, and she fell on that floor so hard, and everybody was like, "What are you doing?" I thought it was and a seat there. And there's a lot there. of us in the car. Yeah, I, I mean, thought it was yeah. a seat there. Yeah. yeah. So, and also, I fell in the. Sh- I was drunk and fell in the shower, mm-hmm. and you were bruised up. I'll, She's yeah. very light, and yeah. so she had black and blues. Mm, Just my whole butt. Man. It was. It was bad. That that's the thing about bathrooms that <laughs> I like no one can help you I know not only can Ingrid nobody help me, help she came you. Help me. oh, oh to, somebody came yeah, in yeah she okay. had to throw a towel over her too yeah. <laughs> I was naked like yeah. what are you gonna do I, I, it's so upsetting <laughs> when something like that happens in the bathroom because now are you at your most vulnerable very yeah. vulnerable like true, like truly vulnerable right <laughs> naked yes. and wet but also no every bathroom is built like a death trap because every bathroom is like let's make things as smooth as possible right. for there was no wet. slippery it was in the shower there was no like grip thing yeah there's no grip first of all I hate those they feel like they're just germs they and are disgusting. but it yeah. saves you from falling I would falling. never have a I would never you know you're in a not nice space if there's a grip mat in the shower here's the I'm thing sorry. this is what you do instead of a grip mat though. what do you do you go ahead and you have the little raised these these you have to get them built in the tub little raised bumps in the tub that'll grip your feet but it's still the porcelain so then it can be clean just like the rest of the tub oh you got money I got yeah. it okay. I, I don't have money I've just seen money I don't have I've just, seen money yeah, I, I, I do not have money I noticed the, I, have seen I money. noticed a thing that money did differently because I've been able to go I've had friends who have had money and go to their house and stuff yeah and the richest houses that I've been to they almost they're so they're so state of the art, they seem haunted. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like like when you go to the bath I went to my buddy's bathroom and no warnings. He just told me where the bathroom was. Mm-hmm. He didn't tell me like, hey, I got a different setup than <laughs> the you're used to. It goes up on its own right? when you yeah, walk past so it. I, I walked in, <laughs> seat went up on its own, and I was like, I don't like that. <laughs> That's pretty presumptuous. I don't like that. You don't know why I walked in, so I don't know why you would do that. And then also, it went up, it went up 
it okay yeah so anyway it went up and then i used the bathroom and then as soon as i was done it went down Ooh. and i was like how wow you know? how did you that was also weird that feels like somebody got a camera yeah <laughs> I was just I was like upset. Like somebody sitting in front of the camera like I think he's going in. I think I think he's I think he's finished. I think I think Ash is on his phone. Yeah. But I actually would love a toilet like that one day. I mean, I would take one. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Especially with the heat when I was in Vegas again, mm -hmm. the seats were heated on the toilet and mm -hmm. then it had a bidet also. Okay. I don't mind a bidet, but I don't like the heated seats. I like all of that. I would love to have that in real life. The heated seat depends on like what you're going through in life though. Because <laughs> if you're if you're in a bad way, let's say you had some like truly poorly cooked Mexican food. Oh, yeah, no. I was you thinking Mexican and food now before you even a, said it, too. And now it's a heated, a heated seat, seat as well. Yeah, I don't like You that. already sweating. Yeah. Why would you need a heated seat? I think it, it depends. Mean? Like you said, if you're in a good space mm -hmm. and you're going to sit or on the toilet. Or if your bathroom is cold in the middle of the night, maybe you want a warm seat. Yeah. What are some things yeah. you think with money are most important in a home? If you were going to invest in, in something that's, you know, maybe not the most practical, but mm -hmm. this is a signal to you like I've made it. Um, I think a view is okay. probably the the biggest thing. I think a, a view determines your perspective from the time that you're waking up to like when you take breaks, when you are just off thinking to yourself. A view is is a uh, a huge reason. You like um, water, or you like trees and nature and mountains. I I don't really have a preference. I do love trees, but also if I have an over <laughs> over view of a city, I okay. think that that can really Busyness. But also, it has to, it has to be the right city because if it's smog, it's like, oh, then I'm not in a good situation. You're in LA. Like, yeah, you're you're just reminded, like, oh, I paid a lot <laughs> to see this smog, right? You know, which just looks like a battle. See, views have never mattered to me much um, because I I never before lived in an apartment building. I've always mm -hmm. lived in like two family houses and mm -hmm. things like that. So I've never thought about that. Yeah, and I'm from Brooklyn. I yeah. feel you. So what am what, I looking at? <laughs> what's your, I guess, like, if you were going to blow money on something in a house, what's Impressive. your main thing? A mattress. Okay. Okay, because when you test mattresses, if mm -hmm. you have an amazing mattress, there's mattresses that, like, hurt your back and you wake up and you're like, that didn't feel good. But you know how when you go to, a, like, a luxurious hotel and, mm -hmm. you're, and you get in the bed and you're like, woo, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Sleep is very valuable to me and I enjoy being in my bed. Yeah. So I think a mattress... There's this mattress company, um, and I, when I was looking for a bed, and they have a mattress that's like hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Oh wow! Yeah. How did I it feel? Yeah. Did you, you didn't get it. It felt, and it's hard because it's hard to say because I feel like it might have felt better because I knew it was one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, but I wouldn't do that. But I just feel like it could be cool. That's when you need like a double blind <laughs> study to buy that mattress. Yeah, <laughs> like, sure. Because the idea, because if someone tells you that something is super expensive. It just it it starts to shape exactly how you feel about everything around does, the money yeah. on it mm -hmm. instead of the actual thing. It just it just robs it of any of its own value. Because people say you get what you pay for, and sometimes you think that if something's inexpensive, mm -hmm. it means it's not so good. Yeah, sometimes it's not though. See, yeah, sometimes I mean sometimes it's bad. Yeah, yeah. I've definitely I feel like in in <laughs> in life I've had the. I've had the experiences of being broke or being, you know, okay. like, okay to mm -hmm. the point where I felt like I could tell after a while, this is good, this is bad. And and I think that when you are, um, when you're just going through something, it all feels normal initially. But especially as you get older or when you have something to reference it from, right. that's when you start to hopefully be able to have some sort of perspective for yourself that's, that's not in any way to do with the cost or what people say about it or anything. Um, yeah. And so I think a mattress is one of those things where I lay on all of them. I'll go to yeah. the mattress firm yeah. and I'm like, oof. Uh, <laughs> I know that two of them are bad. I like definitely I laid on two, <laughs> two bad ones. And then most of them feel the same. The same and right. maybe one, the, the one that you buy feels like, Oh, this is like ten percent better than everything else here. <laughs> well, this one's like horse hair or something. I gotta, um, yeah, I gotta show it to you in the store because okay. I still, I still go there sometimes. I'd be like, can I try the mattresses <laughs> again? <laughs> All right, so but let's talk about your career also as a writer. Mm -hmm. So right now the writer strike is happening. How is yeah. that affecting you? Uh, I mean, I'm not working right now or anything because we're striking. Uh, so it has a definite effect on my, you know, daily life and everything. Are they still making sure you get paid during the strike? 
No, you don't get paid. Oh, you don't? Strike, no. Because I was reading in the news, they were saying some of the non writing staff mm. are still getting paid, you know, for, for coming in, but then they were talking about, you know, stopping that. And it turned mm-hmm. into this whole thing where some shows are still paying some of their non writing staff and some shows aren't. So. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's tough because, you know, the 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 entire point is to <clears throat> withdraw your work and everything so of course it's not going to be me getting paid mm-hmm. but you know obviously you worry about everyone that you work with and everyone in the industry that you want to be okay because that's not who you have any issue with it's right, it's all right. of the the bigger networks and the higher ups that make the decisions that are at the negotiating table and stuff so you know you want to have as few people I, in an ideal world as few people on the the level of the creation be affected as possible but that's that's not the reality that we live in you know so for you so right now you're writing for the daily show mm-hmm. okay yeah all right so everybody's gone from there right now as far as i don't i don't know exactly what's happening hiatus. over there i just know that i'm not you know, you know I'm not, like, so I'm yeah not. yeah i i only know what i'm doing and uh-huh. i'm and that's not, not going writing. in right now yeah it's <laughs> right. not writing right because i know sometimes also people who are like the head person on the show will make sure everybody gets paid still and we, yeah, yeah. I, I, it's it's hard to say since everyone, since it's all of Hollywood, uh, written across the spectrum. It's very hard to say who's gonna do what and, right. and what people will do or or should do or anything. Because everyone's paying attention to what everyone else is doing right yeah. now. Too. Yeah. yeah. Now, what about AI? How do you feel about that? Because I know that's one of the the points they're mm-hmm. trying to predict, and it's hard to predict what's going to happen with AI and how that's going to affect people's jobs. Mm-hmm. So, can you break that part down for us? I mean, I think AI is is definitely um, a tool, and it's something that. I think is going to have its its place in creation that is unavoidable and it's going to have its place in learning that's unavoidable and will be an innovation. I think it's a distinctly American thing to use something that could be such a beautiful tool and to immediately weaponize it against a workforce like that. That's kind of what um, what's so insane and infuriating about the industry's approach to AI and and a lot of other approaches to AI is that you could see AI as a helpful tool mm-hmm. to make the people that are working for you um, um, not even make them, but just to give them a additional a, tools and a, and a, an addition that will be helpful to their artistic endeavor like as soon as they begin, right? Mm-hmm. So one thing I've heard that AI is good for is if you're having a writer's block and it can uh, springboard a bunch of ideas for you and everything based okay. on your prompt and stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with using it to learn better structure when it comes to writing because all of AI right now is so structure based. There's no like, there's no real soul. inspire creation mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. soul to what it to what it makes, and it can only learn from us right now. There's no unique thought to AI right okay. now. So. If someone were to come into an industry and be like, well, we can just use AI to get rid of everybody, it, it, you know, that may make your bottom line a bit cheaper, but it'll make the product worse. Yeah. And it'll also be something that I think in the end you'll probably regret because it can only give you a variation of what's already been created. And I don't think that that's that's a real way forward, you know, to try to replace writers with AI or to try to cut down on writers rooms with AI I think that what people see and I I cannot speak to these execs minds or anything I don't know them but what I think people see is is how impressive it is that you can type in a prompt to an AI like a chat GBT or something like that and then within a half hour it gives you you know um, a, a whole pilot right but do you is read that pilot? pilot? Is yeah. it great? Is yeah. it is it even good? Does it make sense? Is it is is it inspired? Is it different? It's like, you know, it took it took everything that it knows within the internet to make this thing based off your prompts. But is that still an, a, a true original work, or now is it a slight rip off of this thing? Right. And yeah. I think that real writers will always have a a place in creating good stories that I don't think even if even if AI gets to the point of catching up to what a writer can do I don't think that it's worth replacing a writer with and I think that 
it, a lot of the moves being made right now with AI are motivated by greed instead of by innovation. Right. And I also feel like, but I, but we do understand wanting to make sure that there's some type of like regulations in place to sure. ensure that you know, like you said, they may feel like, oh, we can take away or maybe we need less writers because we can get the structure down and then we can just have, you know, a couple of people come in and it doesn't work that way. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't think that anything should work that way when it comes to I, I'm trying to think of the best example. Like there are a lot of jobs right now that uh, a business owner could be served by innovating out of using people. Mm -hmm. So once we get to this self-driving era, you know, a lot of truck drivers would lose their jobs. Right. A lot of, you know, uh, Uber drivers would lose their jobs and everything. And I think that if, if there is something in place of that that a person can go to, then maybe it's okay if if that innovation comes because there'll be other jobs created other jobs due to created. that innovation. It'll just be a shift in yeah. what people have to. But you need a shift. You you can't just throw people out and then tell them we'll go find something else. But we're also trying to get rid of everything else. I think that people are running away with the ideas that AI is going to replace everything because I don't think it can mm -hmm. and I don't think that it should right and I think that when it comes to writers there's all the writers demands are actually really really reasonable yeah and so it's it's frustrating a livable that, wage and I think the problem is wage. with streaming services not being able to get those residuals from shows <laughs> that you know things have changed so much yeah and then you see people making so much money yeah and these executives mm -hmm. and these other services and it's not coming down to be distributed the way it should yeah and I and I just don't I don't know I mean it's probably why I'm not uh, a multimillionaire I don't see the point of uh, you know cutting people out at every cost at every opportunity every chance you get even even sometimes when you've then made a mistake I think that we don't there there's not even saying regulation is the wrong word for it but I don't think people pay enough attention to when something that is a bad idea that was that exact idea happens, they're never appropriately punished for it in a sense. The artist is always punished for it later, mm -hmm. if that okay. makes sense. Okay. Uh, and I think that with a big AI endeavor, it's like, all right, if that's just a horrible idea, who who is that gonna hurt? Is that gonna hurt the exec who has the idea and is like, Let's let's try to make six shows using AI mm -hmm. and just bring in one writer to punch it up and make it not dumb. Right. You know, that's not going to that 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 only hurts writers, benefits them. And then when it doesn't work, it's not as if they'll actually carry the blame for that thing. You know, like for like the Daily Show, how many writers are are there? Um, I believe we have 13. 13. Yeah. Okay. How is how is a writer's room? So you guys come in, you're in a room together, mm -hmm. and you all, someone, there's like a head writer that talks about, hey, pitch me your ideas, or we want to go with this sort of subject, or how does that I mean, every, typically? I know everyone, yeah. every writing room is different. Like, every room is different. Like, when I was even at Tonight Show, it was it was very much like you, you write your jokes and have your jokes in um, initially, mm -hmm. and then you know we sort of would sit together and read through them and everything and the ones that got a laugh just initially got a laugh in the room we mm -hmm. know like that's one to keep that's one to keep that's one to keep and then you know you go to rehearsal with it and then you know jimmy would rehearse it and you feed, uh, you feed him the joke and then or he just oh, reads it's, it from, it's a script, it's a script? Well, yeah it's like it's like a <laughs> by the time it, we get to rehearsal it would have been a, a script he had yes. by then mm -hmm. so now he's just ready to perform and do it and okay. then based off what he likes and what the rehearsal crowd resonated with them that is usually some form of what makes it on the show. Mm -hmm. um, How is that for your ego too? Like, what if you know? Sometimes yeah, you get yeah. writers black. Some of the jokes aren't landing. Yeah, I mean, the is benefit that... is that in both of these scenarios, I've I've had to do it every day, mm -hmm. and so then you quickly get used to it, and you quickly get out of any sort of uh, right. You don't have a choice. It's... Headspace. Right. Yeah, it's like it's like every day. How so, long did you, it take you before one of your jokes got you know um, taken or accepted or whatever? I mean, luckily, in both shows, it, it started the first day. Oh, like, in, in okay. both shows, like, on day one, I got something on, you okay. know, and, like, had good had good first weeks at both shows and, and had um, really great experiences with people. 
at both shows and everything. So, I mean, I've been at Daily Show much longer, though, and, and I love it there. And you and Trevor Noah there. had a great relationship with each other, too. Yeah, so yeah. So that's good. Yeah. That's nice to work with people who you like. Yeah, absolutely. Which is a hard thing to do, too. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, every job that I've ever had that's that's been working for a crazy person had nothing to do with entertainment. It would just be like an odd job I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> where I'm like, like trying to I'm make money, here. and then someone's like a <laughs> lunatic, and I'm like, guys, we're picking pecans. Like, this right. should this shouldn't be that crazy? You, know? you were not picking pecans for real. Yeah, yeah. Where? Yeah. What, what I, were you in? Your, that is such I, a I was in job. Louisiana. Okay, and, I knew it. And I was, had a, to be. yeah, and I, I was a kid too, and I, yeah, I was like picking pecans. <laughs> was that the is that the weirdest job you ever had? Not weird, but like yeah. most unique job. Uh, <laughs> unique. Let me see. I don't. I don't. I, f- I feel like I've done so many How like, did you get job. that job anyway with me? <laughs> I feel like everything just sort of like mushes together in Louisiana. Ever met. Yeah, it's like it's like nothing all of these odd jobs I had in in maybe like high school and right after college was when I did the <laughs> most just random stuff to make money and it's like after college I was trying to save money to move to Chicago Mm -hmm. and in in high school I was just trying to have money Mm -hmm. so then it was like any anything that was like yeah yeah, some like yard work and stuff like that I I worked for the shop foreman at my at my college Um, he had a bunch of properties and so I would work with him Mm -hmm. sometimes in the summer for some extra money and stuff so I'm trying to think of the weirdest one I feel like pecans that was might it. Be, might be it. I mean, pecans is 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 pretty odd. Do you eat pecans? I do eat pecans. Do you eat, did you I, eat some as you picked or no? No, did no. You take some I, home? <laughs> no, no. I needed all the weight. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, oh, yeah that's so right. Then, so then, if, <laughs> add stuff in the bag. Yeah. Pecans. If anything, if a couple rocks fell in there, I was like, oh well. You know. <laughs> Someone's gonna break a tooth. Yeah. <laughs> now I want to talk about um, something in your stand up. All right, so three things that a woman should look for in a man. Yeah, yeah. And um, we discussed this, right? Um, Mm -hmm. You can only get two out of the three. Yeah. Okay, either good dick, good person, or got his shit together. Yeah. Those are the three things. So we were discussing what's the most important out of those three. Uh Uh-huh. Jasmine? So um, I would like to start with good dick, although I feel like that may not be the best thing so i i go good that's dick. a non-negotiable it's yeah it's, yeah. it's non-negotiable good okay. dick is sure. a non-negotiable and then um got his shit together mm-hmm. but think. not a good person because a good person is it's like yeah doesn't matter yeah it could be my friend like you said good yeah. person could be my friend they could just be my, that could be my homeboy or whatever but yeah. i definitely um need good dick and mm-hmm. then um, or maybe i can maybe i can do good got shit together first and then good dick maybe mm-hmm. okay <clears throat> angela what about you I would say a good person no, no. and good dick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nobody really got their shit together. Fair no, enough. No, that, that's not true. Some people have, there are levels to having your shit together. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're I, a good yeah. person, that's good enough. Now, okay, good, people so, don't, good people don't necessarily have their shit together, though. So yeah. now we got to ask you, for a woman, if a woman uh-huh. has a two out of those three, what should it be? Good pussy, not good dick. Uh, <laughs> good pussy, got a good person or got her shit together, which uh, two out of those three? I mean, I feel like maybe maybe it's just because of, of the of the structure of how things break down i feel like most dudes that i know only really think about good pussy and good person see it's like kinda... got like got your shit together is like a very just because when you think when you think about how things play out right like a, like a man who has his shit together and like is making money, right? Mm-hmm. He could fall in love with somebody that just works at Denny's and, and she cute. Yeah. And she's like, but by all accounts, she might be 24, really doesn't have anything together, really yeah. doesn't have her life. Like like if she was if she was a dude, you would be like, this is a dusty dude. Right. But really? she's but she <laughs> but she's pretty and she's right. like a good person. And so it's like, all right, that's she's a bus really all I need. Yeah, a bus driver. <laughs> no, right. Hey, that's I'm all just, I really I'm need. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, she's <You> not. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not. Sorry, I had to do that. <laughs> all right, so all right, so got your shit together doesn't matter. I think it. I think it matters for dudes less. I think that because <laughs> we prefer you don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, that's what, that's why you'll see some of these dudes that you know are older dating, specifically dating younger women. Right, is so that because a woman that has it together is like I imagine. Let's say you're like 45 and you've kind of got it together. 
a woman with it together is not going to be impressed by you at all. <laughs> right. But a 22 year old is going to be like, you, he got, ooh, oh, wow. you got a house. You got you got a whole house with a couch. <laughs> wow. Right. And now you're in it. Now you're like you're like off to the races. So <laughs> I think that I think actually potentially having it together is like something a very specific type of man wants as a okay. as like a top too. All right. You fair know? fair enough. Go ahead, Jasmine. I just wanted to say, and I don't want to get too far in this. I feel like having good vagina and having good dick is different because I feel like good dick. I mean, it has more variables. I feel like mm-hmm. I th- feel like good vagina. I feel like if a guy is really into you, he thinks he's gonna think is thinks is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's fair. Right, you know that that makes a lot of sense. Because if me. a guy is really into you, I think he'll be like, "Oh my gosh," you know, he's not. It's just like he's yeah, into you. Yeah, because what is bad vagina anyway? Right, that's what I'm saying. Unless it's yeah. like it's it's, it's it's mostly good. Good, I feel it like it could be like maybe she's not moving properly or something. Yeah, but it's like, like the starfish. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like the I mean the starfish or <laughs> yeah. or like. Um, I, I guess also like if someone has a truly like unsettling disposition in bed, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? A unsettling like, disposition. Yeah, like like every once in a while, you just hear stories <laughs> of someone who's <laughs> like, like my friend summed it up the best, where she was she was like, one time I was in bed and something felt uncomfortable, and it was like I she was trying to put herself in that man's mind because they they were hooking up. And then something felt uncomfortable, and then she went "ow," and then he stopped, and she was like, "What?" And it's like, "Yeah, that I no person can work with that." Like, does that make sense? I don't get it. She yeah. was kind of like, she was kind of like "ow," and then he stopped, and she said "what?" as if "why did you stop?" But she was kind of like "what?" And it's oh, like, okay. it's like we're not okay, having fun now. Yeah, right. This is, not nice. This yeah. is weird. Okay. You know what I mean, yeah, yeah, some yeah. people think "ow" in yeah. bed is a good thing. Some there's a different do. kind of owl. There's, I feel like there's, there's a very specific owl. owl. Yeah. It was an owl that made him stop. Like, so it's not a <laughs> not a hot owl. You know what I mean? There's 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 like owls where you're like, wow, you're a re- you're a real yeah. actress. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Wow, you're really putting you're it like, together. Owl, this is Sorry, huge. And yeah. then and then and then every once in a while there'll be an owl where you're like, did I did I poke your eye? You what, okay? what is, oh my gosh, what happened? You know. Yeah. So no, I think that's true. I think that there are a lot of guys out Bedroom there. Bedroom mishaps you know, are the funniest things. Yeah. yeah. I feel like. Yeah. Because yeah. it's awkward and do you address it? Yeah. Like if you fart by accident. Yeah. Oh. Do you ignore it or do you depends acknowledge on the part. It? Like if you've been with a person for a while, you you gotta acknowledge it. I guess so. I mean I guess I guess you could try to power through, but like it, <laughs> it it's it's one of those things where it's like what you know my <laughs> My friend told me he was like sidebar. It's a lot yeah. of your friends. I feel like friend yeah, is cold your for stories? yourself. Yeah, I feel yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like I, friend is cold for you. I genuinely, when I say friend, I genuinely mean friend because I tell people when it's me. Okay, but uh, <laughs> yeah. But then to be fair, I have said my friend a lot in, <laughs> over the course of the show, so I get you have it. A lot of friends. It's me too. Uh, I, I try as hard as I can <laughs> I, to be affable and fun. <laughs> Uh, but my friend said his knee popped oh. while he was like having sex, and it didn't pop in a way that hurt him. But he's like, the pop was so loud, I might as well have farted <laughs> because the pop was like it was it's like a it was such a distraction, and it was it was so loud that she turned around <laughs> to look behind her, and when and when she saw it was him, kind of like <laughs> trying to hit a position. She was like, "Are you okay?" And he was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm good, baby." And it was like trying to still power through but then every time they switch positions she said are you sure <laughs> and it's like that's i might as well fart it then at least a fart seems like it's only gonna happen once yeah. like but would you say something you know, if somebody farted in bed with you or would you just ignore it i think you gotta say something i, I think you have <laughs> you to okay? because because this is the thing <laughs> This is the thing. If you don't say anything, they're at least thinking like, all right, maybe it wasn't that loud. Maybe <laughs> maybe they didn't hear it. It's like, no, no, I heard it. I heard it, yeah. And I'm just going to quickly acknowledge it so that we all know that it's okay to fart here. This is a farting space, you know? It's a safe space to fart. It's, it's, it's truly all right. You get to be yeah. like, damn, Taco Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, feel like, I feel like people are also weirder about it than they need to be because it's like you have a human body yeah I know, but it's it's you know? still it's embarrassing though sometimes it, it can be a, a yeah a fight can also sound the same yeah uh, but you, i feel 
like you, but uh, I feel like maybe you can, the guy can maybe feel you like. But sometimes it happens after. Like, mm, it yeah, does, it, it does, does happen yeah. after. It's like and after, also, after a, a queef and a fart have different lengths of time. Which, well, because a fart can mean? be long, right? Like a, a fart can be forever. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Sometimes, sometimes you can. I, uh oh. This is a personal story. Yeah, yeah. I farted. I farted for like quite a while before to where I surprised myself. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it didn't feel like after a while it felt it felt like I was talking to myself in the because it was just for so long. Whereas I've never heard a queef that was more than like it's pretty short, right? Two seconds. Yeah, it's a quick little. Yeah. Yeah. You know, As, and whenever you fart, you want to know does it smell. So you try to smell to see. I feel like yeah. I know if mine's gonna it smell bad. I know because you because you know what you ate. <laughs> well, no, I know because I feel like if it doesn't make a sound, like it's gonna smell. Yeah, yeah. Silent but deadly, mm-hmm. they call it. Yeah, that's yep. fair. I mean, my my farts. <laughs> the louder they are, I feel like the less li- less they smell. Yes, right? yes. Like <laughs> I've know. I've definitely had a couple of them where I was like, that's unfair because I farted in public. I was like. That was louder than it needed to be, and it doesn't even stink. So now I got I got the full judgment of a fart in public, but it's not even like I've I've affected anyone's day, you know. Or if you fart quietly in public, and Oof. then you can act, act like it's not you. Yeah, but then you, you, then yeah. it smells though. Yeah, because the quiet ones I feel like really do. I've also been indignant with people, like I, <laughs> so I mean? so I will like have a soft fart, and then and then people start to smell it, and then like, I'm like the loudest that? one. I'm like I'm like That's oh wild. wow, y'all have been going to church. This is crazy. Is y'all y'all fart? living foul. That is ooh we. This is crazy. That's terrible, man. You know I will I will get you know that whole smelted delta thing is like the truest That's what, but I, I won't be first and whoever denied it supplied it yeah i won't be first right yeah and i never the first might be anyone. the might be the whoever's first might be the one that dealt it right yeah 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 so i always you're wait in the proximity of i wait to see somebody notice and then i match their energy like if they have a little like <laughs> like if they have like just a twitch i do a twitch and then i'm like but i'll i will say something right after somebody else says something the worst is if you act like you don't smell anything you're like yeah i don't smell it <laughs> yeah like yeah it was you yeah <laughs> especially to see what people what people's different tolerances are because my buddy <laughs> which is him go ahead no no, no. this this one really this, i laugh so hard this one really wasn't me but <laughs> My buddy was when he was in school. They were shooting a film because his his major was a uh, film, and him and his friend were going to a location. They get out of the location, and my my first friend says, "As soon as I get out of the car, I smell like it's like it's like straight up like so sewage far. almost. <laughs> yeah. Like it was like something bad happened, like some some leak has happened or something." Mm-hmm. And then my other friend got out of the car, and he walks up to him as they're setting up the camera. He's like, "Man, do you smell pizza?" <laughs> And he was like, what the hell is he talking about? Like it was pizza? like, yeah, he's like, what kind of pizza? And then after like five minutes, he goes, oh, oh, that doesn't smell like pizza at all. Like, <laughs> for you to even mistake it for pizza in the first place. Now that's crazy. Yeah, that's that's so insane. <laughs> but listen, so during this time, right, I know you've been working on material for mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw your Peacock um, special. Oh, and then, thank you for watching. Yeah, yeah. It, it was hilarious. It was very funny. It made me rethink a lot of things. Oh, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, like you said. And I encourage everybody to watch that, too. I know you did your Comedy Central special also, right? Mm-hmm. So what's next for you, and what are you working on? Because I know you're constantly working on material. Yeah, I mean, I'm working on the next special, now um not not shooting it yet or anything but just Mm -hmm. working on what's going to be in the hour and stuff and then working on um as much like writing in general as i can Mm -hmm. but trying to use this time to sort of like plan for whenever things go back to some form of normal right you know so i have a lot of stuff that i want to do um, like I'm still doing my podcast mm-hmm. uh, with my co-host Logan, um, and I'm doing as much writing as I can, even for hopeful scripted stuff in the future and everything, because I want to develop more and everything once things, you know, come to some sort of resolution mm-hmm. and everything. And those are the main focuses right now. Is right. just you know I'm I'm up 
just about every night. I'm at the cellar. I'm at the stand, um, New York Comedy Club sometimes, and just trying to hone in on what the next hour is going to be and then shoot as much of it as I can. And I'm touring as well, so then I'm trying to... Oh, yeah, you know, we have the dates here. Yeah. Oh, sweet, sweet. Okay, the freshman tour, like which has already it. started. Yeah. Okay, Houston, Texas, May 31st. Uh, Austin, Texas, and then Dallas, then Dayton, Ohio. We're going to be in that area. Um, oh, yeah, we are. We're going to Yellow Springs. Oh, sweet, yeah, sweet. We're going to be in Yellow Springs. Chicago, you going back to, you know, oh, Brooklyn. We can do that one. Oh, we can do Brooklyn, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's in November. And then Arlington, Virginia. Or you come to D.C., we can do Arlington. Yep, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm, you know, taking it on the road is, is one of the best ways to make sure it's as universal as possible, that mm-hmm. it's not just so... Um, you know, metropolitan minded or city centric that it that people that don't live here or in Chicago or LA, yeah, they get everything and they mm-hmm. it resonates with everyone. Mm-hmm. And you're great you know. at talking to the audience too. Oh, thank you. And that gives you a lot of like, I guess, um improv type of material. Yeah. Because yeah. real life is the funniest thing. Yeah, yeah. Especially when someone comes to a show and is they don't know that they're a character. There's living life is <laughs> right. is the best, you know, right. because there was a guy who came to the stand. This is like last year, mm-hmm. came to the stand and was talking about those beds that, that you were oh, talking about. He that, and he was a salesman of those beds. And he's like, yeah, if I sell like he said, he's like, yeah, if I sell 10 beds a year, I'm like good oh, wow. or whatever. Because he because he also lives so like I guess he just lives like within very specific means that he's already he's established. Fine with that. Yeah. So he's like he's mm-hmm. like, my whole year I gotta sell ten beds. So I'm just, you know, I reach out to people, I try to get people to come try them out and stuff like that. But I'm just chilling. Yeah. And nice. I was like, wow, wow that's life. that's a I was like, man, that's like Beautiful. It's That's, like, um, and by the way, I'm just going to say it because it's, it's Savoir bed. And I saw that um, Taryn Hall is doing something with them. But Jasmine, you're sleeping on a Savoir bed in the guest room. I, I, I really like that bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. it's not the $100,000 mattress. I just want to put that out well, there. I know it's so, not. Because <laughs> I can feel I, it not being $100,000. <laughs> no, like, yeah. I like it's your bed, nice though. It's a nice mattress, though. Yeah. But I will say the actual bed, and I love this, I am the one that will buy a floor sample. Okay. So I went in the store, and they knew I liked the bed. The salesman actually hit me up. He emailed me and he was like, I know you really like this bed and we're selling the floor sample at this discounted rate and I'm you're the first person I'm calling for it. Which was so wow. nice of him. Yeah. And so I got it and then they threw in the mattress. Wow. So that's, I that's dope. So what you're a, in a really expensive What a good life. Yeah. No, yeah. I, the, the I can't bed believe it. it. Was a, I was very man. excited. Listen, the bed, you know how you you're like, I can't wait to get home and get my bed. I'm always like, I can't wait to get an Angie's bed. Like this mm-hmm. I just, I'm gonna get com- I, I always yeah, I'll be it's in really that nice. joint. I like burrito myself. I like take the covers. And yeah, I go swaddle. And I, mm-hmm. I oh, swaddle yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I try to. If anything, this is this is the move. If you, especially if the temperature is right mm-hmm. inside, so Which you is, don't want to make yourself sweat. Right. You know? That's what I'm saying. You know, it's got to be like 10 degrees below what you yes, think. I yes. keep telling her. I okay. don't like that, but go ahead. I I also don't like that, and I tried it for the first time, and and people are right. It's it's like you it is it is a bit better. I have to go to the bathroom more when I'm cold. But continue with what that's, you're gonna say. That's more than fair. you go now, that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> I go a lot. <laughs> so you really gotta you really gotta fully like wrap yourself like a burrito. You gotta put one end <laughs> over and almost tuck it to the side, right? <laughs> then put the other end over. That's a real okay? story. How do you then what if there's a fire? Roll. How do you get out? <laughs> I mean, look, you shit out of luck. Look, you go ahead and unplug everything before you go to bed <laughs> uh-huh. so that you are at the least risk. <laughs> Or burn it up, but <laughs> then you. This is this is the important thing because your toes could also get cold kicking in the night, right. getting to the edge, yeah, and, and now your you toes cold. are out, right? Yeah. So now you feel crazy because the whole body is warm and the feet <laughs> and are cold. Feet are cold. That's the yeah. worst so feeling. then that's when you have to you have to sit up, and and it's it's hard to do because you've already wrapped this. <laughs> Yo, side. you are so funny. But if you put this, if you flip this part over the right, bottom, the bottom you flip part. it flip it over. And then you put your arm back. Then you roll over one more time. <laughs> no. Now it's now now you're like properly stuck. Can I just say that? You know, Angie and I drink. We have a good time. We drink a lot. We got to do this after I, we're drinking. I'm not doing that. No, you're gonna <laughs> show me. Help me do it. I'll wrap you up. Yeah, wrap me up. Because I like to sleep where when I get out of the bed, mm-hmm. I don't really have to make it. I just flip it back, and I don't move much when I sleep. Oh, okay. So I like to get in the bed, yeah. get under the cover, sleep in one little corner, and then mm. when I get out, I just put the sheet back. I don't get under like the covers. I, I don't get under the, the covers. Bed. Yeah, yeah. I don't get under the covers. Okay. Yeah. You don't get under the covers. No, I do not get under the covers. I, I you, told you, you put yourself. I yeah. pull it over me. I pull the the 
over yeah. me, like a burrito, but not all that tucking he's talking about doing. Mm-hmm. I don't do that, yeah, but I pull the covers over me. Yeah. But see, yeah. what he's talking about, I go to the bathroom like three or four times, so in I can't. In the night? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you wake up to go. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you, she has to go to the bathroom right now, I guarantee you. I do. But are you hitting rim? Like, are you? <laughs> no, are you... it just if I feel like a little something uh-huh. and I'm up, I got to go. So I'm okay. okay right now. I'm not at rim. No, I'm no, I'm, I'm no. I mean, I mean rim sleep. Yeah. Oh, Are you hitting meant, rim I sleep? I thought he was just I talking thought he about... meant like, am I at the top? Oh where yeah, I can't? yeah. I gotta rim. really gotta go. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. No, no. Is your no, no. I don't you're know. in rimming? Yeah. Is what you, you thought? I don't know. Okay. You you need <laughs> rim sleep to live. Don't know so, if I'm hitting that. I don't know if I'm hitting rim. That means you're not getting in a deep enough yeah. sleep to get I don't, the most but, quality rest. Listen, but we don't know if I'm not. I don't know if I am. No, or you I'm do. Not. If you're getting up, you're not. Yeah, if you because here's the if you get up three time. times, I get up three times. Yeah. Sure. Are you sleeping? Eight hours, like, are you? I sleep. You're supposed to sleep. Shade. You need a sleep monitor. You know one of those rings. Yeah, I'll get one of those. Yeah, yeah. We should, we should get you one of those. Okay. So that, why but, am I saying we? Like me and you are gonna get into it together. I mean, I am concerned. I'll, get, I'll check I'll, back I'll, in. I'll, I'll get myself one. <laughs> but I think I'm okay, guys. I know. I know you may feel okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I'm telling you, okay. if you, because this is the thing, you need okay. four hours to hit rim. And if you're getting up every like three you're, times, yeah, you're not, I get up. At, I get up at least twice. At least, okay. You're probably hitting rims most of the time. Then, do you remember your dreams? Sometimes, do but you, we also be drinking at night. So, do you know I, your dreams, Josh? I do. I do. Do you and have any recurring ones? Um, this one wasn't recurring, but it was the most recent, and it was really upsetting. <laughs> or was this your buddy's what dream? No, no, this was me. <laughs> this is uh, so I I was in a like facility. <laughs> But I don't know, like, I couldn't tell if it was school or, like, prison or whatever, right? It's a big but difference. it was just, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it was it was just, it felt like a place that I'm, I'm like, I, I cannot tell what this place is, but I know I'm here and it feels like I can't leave, okay. right? And then there was a guard and the guard passed by me and it didn't look like a prison guard or anything, but he was just like, do better. <laughs> and I was like, what? That's not not in my sleep. <laughs> like, like, not in my sleep. You're doing like, bad if somebody it, in your sleep is telling yeah, you to do better. Yeah. Why? If a guard do better. Said, do better. Yeah. Like, my all my subtext is on the nose. Like, all of it is just like, you Google are that. insecure. What does it mean when I have in a sleep? In the dream dictionary. Yeah. Do, do better. better. And then, okay, we'll, we'll end on that, but let me just find it. Do better. Dream dictionary. Because I wasn't doing anything, so this was just a Clearly. general statement of yeah. you know, do better of of my life. Mm. It really stuck what with me. What does it me. say? Was Ange? there a bird? Uh, I don't <laughs> remember a, guard, a bird. Maybe. Yeah, just, authoritative figure. Yeah, <laughs> Ange, tell us what it means. I'm trying to find it. Okay, you weren't being chased, falling, being naked, flying, teeth falling out. I used to have that a lot. But I have teeth falling. I have Ooh. gum, and I can't get it. Uh, uh, uh. I will pass out in my sleep if somebody loses teeth in my dream. It be I... me losing. Like, sometimes my teeth are... Oh. <laughs> what, is, what does that mean? Not good. That's, I mean, it doesn't right, Sometimes I can't get my... I want to say something, but it won't come out. Oh, yeah. that That's happened to me before, where I'm, like, getting ready to, like, really let somebody have it, it and then like, I don't have a voice or yeah. something. And it'll be like right when they need to get their comeuppance too and i even know what i'm gonna say yeah. so it's like the where you should be dropping the gauntlet down <laughs> yeah. and i'm like Let the huh. swing. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're like what what was that but and mine like, mine is often i'm chewing gum and i can't get like it's like i'm trying to like speak but oh, this gum no. is like, I can't get, yeah it's bad oh mm-hmm. mine is just raspy <laughs> mine is just i should have had water you know? Oh man, I can't find it. Okay, I gotta maybe... get a real dream interpreter. All right, next yeah. time. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming by. This took quite a turn. Yeah, yeah. I want to thank you. This is probably for the longest me. interview we've ever had, Angela. Is it? Oh, has it? Yeah, for this show. Oh, yeah. Okay. I feel like I bring that out of people. I really <laughs> hold people hostage and talk until they're like, I actually have to go. He's like, I you need know? to get back to work. <laughs> I gotta do. I gotta yeah. do better. Yeah, I have to do better <laughs> in life. <laughs> I'm going to find this out. But yeah. thank you so much. Um, where can people find you? Just because I know they're going to want to if they don't already. Oh, well, thank you. I, if you were looking to catch up with me on any social, you can find me at Josh Johnson Comedy on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Mm-hmm. And you can also catch me every week on my podcast, The Josh Johnson Show, that I do with uh, Logan. We tell each other stories about our lives. We've been friends for like about 10 years but there's still a lot we don't know about each other so we we share those experiences and then we go on the road together and talk about that 
and then safe to say that's your best friend yeah 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 uh, i have maybe three people in my life that i am as close with as as logan and so i find that men don't you know. say best friend that's what i just wanted to see he didn't want to say it either. men, don't, oh, yeah, men yeah. don't say like that's my best friend yeah yeah but we do yeah, it only it, yeah. it only comes out when you're getting married <laughs> Cause that's when you finally the need toasting. a best man, yeah. and you gotta like get you gotta like get one of you know what I mean. So Logan would be um, your best man. I think it, it, it's it's a it's tough. It's in the running. So okay. wow. Jacob Jacob Minacci, who also <laughs> directed the Peacock special mm-hmm. that you watch. Okay, you know we've been friends since we were three and everything. Oh, nice. he and wins so, then. Yeah, he yeah, got yeah. Win. I mean, based off time, I'm like he got to my yeah. man. Like I expect to be you in think his Logan wedding. Will no, he can't. He's no, known no. him since he was three. Okay. No, no. And I plus, that, that don't mean he can't feel away still. No, he understands. No, no. I think right. I think Logan also like has a similar thing for me where I feel like his his best friend in life <laughs> is a friend from when he was younger. Right. You know? Yeah. But we are definitely each other's like best of the best, you know, comedy friends. Like I I really have Logan and Dulce Sloan when it comes to like mm-hmm. people who I talk to about comedy, about life and stuff and like know I can hit up whenever and everything. Okay. Yeah. Well, do better. I'm gonna do my best. Okay. We'll we'll see. We'll see if it's good enough. <laughs> I hope to be back and be genuinely like, wow, I've really done better. <laughs> And hopefully I'm wearing it on my face. You know what I mean? Hopefully you see me and you're like, wow, Josh, you were on time this time. Like, you've really done so well. I appreciate he was five minutes late. And honestly, like, up here, that's not a big deal. But they mm. were like, oh, my God, he's fine. I'm like, it's fine. We're not even yeah. ready. Right. No. no, I feel you. I, but I just felt bad. That was because, great. I'm the same way. Yeah, because this is my thing. I left. I left where I should have been here 10 minutes early. Okay. Then, and I guess this is just, if, if anybody ever wants to stop all of New York, all you gotta do is be a little sick on the train and they will stop all the trains. Oh. Cause then they snitched on the person to us. He wasn't even on my train. The conductor comes on and is like, hey y'all, we got a sick passenger at West Fork, <laughs> so we so we stuck until, you know. They, they we get can, him off the train. Yeah, until we can get him off the train. Cause nobody can touch anybody because they're all scared of being sued. Yeah. So yeah. then then they rerouted my F train to the express lane. Oh, so then, then I pass back. West Fourth and I see the train that you have to get that, on. Yeah, like I see that tray and that one still stopped. And then the dude, like conductor on that tray is just like, like, like he's just like, he's just having a day, right? And then and they, it looked like I couldn't see anything, but it looked like he looking over the person that's like passed out. And it's just, I, and then we went more express. And I was like, well, that helps me get here, yeah, get you know, faster. like closer. But wow, to think that an entire city will come to its knees if, if you just, just a little sick. Yeah. or if somebody pulls the emergency brake on the train, that will stop everything too. I can't believe that we're able to do that. That that <laughs> as, as for a city with no Batman's <laughs> and three million Jokers, like the idea that someone could just stop the train yeah. when they feel like is I I never stop thinking about it. <laughs> like I've never because also it wouldn't help. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Like, like now you'd be stuck. in a tunnel and now you're yeah. stuck. Because yeah. one time we got we got stuck and we were halfway stuck in and stuck out of that. the train. So we the we tunnel. see the uh, we see the platform, right? And, and this guy <laughs> with a briefcase. This is like this guy's like out of eighty or something. Like he has a suit, briefcase, and he's like having he's like losing it because it's early morning. So I'm about to be late for everybody's about to be late for work, right? right? <laughs> And he just screams. He's like, "Ah, we're stuck. We're stuck today of all days, right?" <laughs> and then, and then a homeless dude stands up and goes, "Nah, y'all are stuck." <laughs> and then he climbed out of the. You know that skinny window? He climbed out of that window, climbed no. on top of the train, and then jumped to the platform and walked off. And we all just watched him. Because our car was half in the tunnel and half on the platform. Oh, my gosh. And so we just watched him do it. And I was like, that was like a metaphor for life. Like, <laughs> he like, said, no, y'all, nah, y'all are stuck. <laughs> I have nowhere to be. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love that. And the train stories are great for you because it's good yeah. content. That's why I said I'm going to take the train to work. We should. Mm-hmm. Remember, I was saying that mm-hmm. um, when I move into my new house, I live like right near the train. And I was mm-hmm. like, driving to work is a hassle. Yeah. And I think I'm going to start taking the train. And everybody's like, you can't take the train. I'm but like, people yeah. are going to stop. 
stop you though. That's it's, gonna be the thing. It's though. great content though. Yeah, but yeah. everyone's gonna stop you though. Also, if you wear if you wear a mask. Oh yeah, do I that. I feel like people won't and stop don't you. talk. No, actually, I wore a mask on the train before, and I was reading a book, and a guy sat next to me and talked to me the whole entire. Did he train. know who you were? Yes. Okay. Even with my mask on, for some reason, people still do come up to you. Sometimes mask. people yeah. still. Fair enough. That's that's how you know you're truly famous. I know that's right. When somebody <laughs> when somebody just need eyes and forehead, and they're like, <laughs> "That's Brad Pitt. I'm gonna make my move." You know what I mean? Like I got I got my whole face out all the time. Not as recognizable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really just able to live my I'm life from freely. Brooklyn and people know I'm from there and where I got on the train and I'm everything. With you. Be humble. Yeah, sure. But <laughs> <laughs> like off your eyebrows alone. Yep. Somebody was like, hey, oh, how you doing? Oh my God. <laughs> and because he has a um the bit about the kid on the train, and it's true. Like we see yeah. so many things yes. growing up on the train that nothing Not even phase. phases us. Mm-hmm. I remember yeah. I was on the train once when I was young, and there was a guy and he had his penis out. <laughs> I promise you, he was sitting diagonally in a two seat. You know how they have the two seat on the side. Mm-hmm. He was over there and he was going at it on the train. And I was sitting with my mom and I just was like, <laughs> just look the other way. It <laughs> was awful. disgusting. It's but awful. It's, what can you do? And yeah. no one got off the train. Yeah, nobody got time to get. Yeah, off the people train. still need to get where they need to get, and there were seats there. Yeah. and it doesn't matter if there's like it stinks, if there's shit on the ground, yeah. if there's seats on that train, people will get on that car and sit. Unless and it's you, empty. Yeah, and then we, if it's when already you see empty, it's empty, people are like, hey, you know not to nah, get on it. Nah, that's the devil in there. Yeah. <laughs> that's not. No, nah, I'm gonna pray in the next car. <laughs> You're not gonna get me. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, the, my favorite is the woman that yelled at that guy. <laughs> Did you see that went viral like two, three years ago? No. There was a guy who was clearly like trying to to jerk it, but behind his backpack or whatever. And then this woman <laughs> I, I, started I started yeah. filled with him, and then was like that. was like. What you doing with your nasty ass? You with that freaky stuff? Like, is yelling. And then he, he like, to say he's the one with his penis out, my man started clutching his pearls. He was like, I've never spoken to like this. How dare you? Oh, my God. And then she's like, I will whoop you. Oh, my gosh. She was, like, letting him have I got to find that clip. She was letting him have it. Uh, well, we're taking the train. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again for joining us. Thank we you really for appreciate me. you. I cannot wait when you come back and you're doing better. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm going to try. <laughs>